This is Jack Jackson. We're going to be going over the practice test three from trigonometry. So the first question asks about finding uh, out if an equation is an identity or not. And to show an equation is not an identity, we must find at least one value of the variable that results in both sides being defined but not equal, uh, but unequal. So that would be B there. To show an equation is not an identity, we must find at least one value of the variable that, re that results in both sides being defined but unequal. Now to show it is an identity, we have to go through a series of steps and justify those steps to transform one side of the equation into the other. Now here are some identities if we can fill in the blank. These are basic Pythagorean identities. Sine square of x plus cosine square of x equals 1. You should have that memorized. So that should be a quick answer there is B. Okay. Of course, this comes from the uh, Pythagorean theorem just applied to uh, on a unit circle. Take any point here on the circle. And the coordinates there are uh, cosine of theta and sine of theta where we have some rotational angle theta. Well, that means this side is the absolute value of cosine of theta, and this is sine of theta, and that's 1 from a unit circle. And so just the Pythagorean theorem then gives us sine square of theta uh, plus cosine square of theta equals 1, and so that gives us our Pythagorean identity. To get the other Pythagorean identities, divide both sides by sine square of theta, and we get 1 plus cosine over sine is... Uh, Let's see, that's see, sine over cosine is tangent. So that'd be cotangent square of theta. And this is 1 over sine square of theta <coughs> is cosecant square of theta. Of course, the one with sec. Uh, okay, so if you look at C, that's cosecant of square of theta minus cotangent square of theta equals 1. So if we look down at part C, this is going to be a 1 there. And part B. If we look back at it, we take this original one here, divide both sides by cosine square of theta. Sine square over cosine square is tangent square of theta. Cosine square of theta over cosine square of theta is 1, and 1 over cosine square of theta is secant square of theta. That should be an equals right there. And so that gives us uh, that one. And so 1 plus tangent square of theta equals secant square of theta. And so there we get B. So you can also just kind of remember remember it remember in a way that tangent and secant go together, cotangent and cosecant, sine and cosine. That will help you get uh, a little bit. But it's probably useful at least to memorize this one, if not these other two, but at least be able to go from one to the ne uh, those other two. Uh, verify the following identity. Okay, so we have oops, wrong button. Okay, so we have tangent of x minus, uh, times cosecant square of x, and we want to um, minus tangent of x. And we eventually want to turn that into cotangent of x. Okay, well, I see two tangents here. My first inclination would be to factor that out. Tangent of x times cosecant square x minus 1. So that's the reason of that is the distributive property that a times b plus a times c is a times b plus c. Distributive property. Um, and I believe, let's see, if you look at part b, that is the first step there. Okay. Now what can we do? Tangent we could write as uh, 1 over cotangent. Cosecant square minus 1. Let's see. From right here, cosecant square minus 1 is cotangent square. So I could write that as cotangent square of the x, of course. We multiply those together, we get what we're looking for. So I use that Pythagorean identity on the uh, right part, and I use my reciprocal identity on the left part. Now, if you look, that's exactly the steps that they have here for uh, B. 
for A, this doesn't work out right. The sign is backwards when you distribute this. You don't get the right signs there, so that's not going to work. For C, um, the first step is right, so they're the same there. And then the next one, when you cancel out here, you get one over cotangent, not cotangent, so that, that's not right. And then here, um, it should be this times tangent of x. So we factor out a tangent of x. We're left with cosecant square of x minus 1, but you still have times the tangent of x. So these are not these are not equal here, and the last two are not equal for that matter. So b is the only one that would work there. Next question. Establish this identity. Okay, if I was working this identity out, I'd start with the more complicated side. 1 over cosecant of theta minus 1 uh, minus 1 over cosecant of theta plus 1 and I eventually want to turn that into 2 tangent square of theta. Now to do this I see two fractions here uh, subtracted and I want to end up with basically one term down here. So the, the natural thing to do is to try to put those two fractions together. To do that we're going to do a common denominator so I'm going to multiply the first one by uh, cosecant of theta plus 1 over cosecant of theta plus 1. And that's times the 1 over cosecant of theta minus 1. And the second one I'm going to do kind of the opposite. This is cosecant of theta plus 1 in the denominator. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by cosecant of theta minus 1. So in the top, um, so I get one fraction in the bottom, which is cosecant of theta minus 1 times cosecant of theta plus 1. And the top I get cosecant of theta plus 1 minus parentheses, 1 minus cosecant of theta minus 1. Okay, and if you look, that is the correct step here. Uh, that's also the correct step on the last one. So now we're down to A or D if we're going to follow the same steps I have here. Uh, looks like I'm going to have to move this down. Maybe another step here. Just do a little erasing here. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, now the next step here. I want to go ahead and multiply the uh, bottom out, and then I get I've got I mean so so here uh, so basically basically these steps are, are more or less the same, but I'm using using the steps that n times a over n times b is the same as a over b if n is not zero, and I'm also using this thing that a over b plus uh, let's say a over d plus b over d is a plus b over d. So I'm kind of using those two properties to get to here. Then I'm going to use the property that a plus b times a minus b is a square minus b square, which is FOIL or the, or the uh, distributive property. So I get cosecant square of theta minus 1 in the bottom. Here I'm going to use the distributive property in the top and get cosecant of theta plus 1 minus 1 plus cosecant of theta I'm sorry this is that should not be there there we go so let me rewrite that the right way minus cosecant of theta plus one now, the cosecant theta and the minus cosecant theta cancel each other out, and I got 2 over cosecant square theta minus 1. And the reason is I'm combining like terms there. And then, uh, let me squeeze in one more step here. And that is cosecant square theta minus 1 is cotangent square theta. 1 over cotangent square is tangent square. So I'll use a reciprocal identity on the last step. Use a Pythagorean identity from here to here. 
reciprocal identity go to there. Okay, now which one of these matches this progression the best? Uh, supposedly this first one. So the top step is right here. And then the next step, they took it to here. So they kind of did this step in their head and this step in their head. And then the next step is this one here. And then finally we end up with our final answer. So that's correct. Okay, what's wrong with the others? Well, let's see here. Here I, when I multiply these out, okay, hmm. Well, I'm not sure how you would get to this directly in one step. That doesn't doesn't make sense. And it's not quite right anyway because, for example, 2 over sine squared is not 2 times tangent squared. So that alone tells you that these two last two things are not equal. So we've got some problems there. Uh, 1 over cosecant squared is not tangent squared, so that's definitely out of whack there, too. So just those last two are not equals enough to tell you that things are out of whack there. This one starts out right for the first step. Let's see, the next step is even correct as well. But cosecant square theta minus 1 is not sine square theta, it's cotangent square. And of course, two, 1 over sine square is not tangent square. So again, these last two are not equal. So, last one's close except for that one step right there that should be cotangent where it has sine. Next question. Okay, so we're going to use our multiple angle uh, identities here. So remember that sine of uh, a plus b, you should memorize this, let's see, it's sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. So when I have sine of 60 degrees plus 180 degrees, okay, that's going to be, well, actually there's, a, there's another way to do this one, but let me show you one way we can do this. If it says use the sum of difference ideas, we can do it this way. So this is sine of 60 degrees, cosine of 180 degrees, plus cosine of 60 degrees, times sine of 180 degrees. <laughs> this particular one there's even a shorter way to do it okay 60 degrees remember that's 60 degrees this one up here is 30 degrees this is 1 2 and square root of 3 for the sides if you put it that way and so the sine of that is square root of 3 over 2 cosine of 180 degrees wrap around 180 degrees you're going straight out here to the left and that goes to the point negative one zero so the cosine is negative one cosine of the 60 degrees is one half and the sine of 180 degrees is zero so that term goes away and so you get minus the square root of three over two now let me show you an easier way to do this of course if you're just doing 180 plus 60 degrees uh, that's actually an angle by itself that we know because here's 180 plus 60 more gives you an angle right here in this quadrant and if we think of that as radius 2 um, where this is, well I'm sorry, draw your reference triangle the right way reference triangle up here 2 for the hypotenuse, square root of 3 this way and 1 here and we want to find that, so this point here has x of of uh, negative 1 and y of negative square root of 3 with an r of 2 and we can do sine is y over r so it's negative square root of 3 over 2 that gives us a um, one of our regular angles where the reference angle is 60 degrees one of our special angles and so we can just type that in of course you'll be using the symbol palette on the left Okay. 
So 75 degrees is not one of our special angles, but it is one we can figure out, perhaps as a sum. So tangent of 75 degrees, we could think of as two of our angles. Let's see, how about 30 and 45? 30 degrees plus 45 degrees. Okay, those are special angles that we know. Now, let's remember what our identity is for tangent of a sum. Tangent A plus B is uh, tangent A plus tangent B over 1 minus tangent A times tangent B. So it's useful to have that memorized. If not, you're going to have, may have to derive it on the test, so you should probably memorize that one. Okay. So we kind of fill in the blanks here. This is the tangent of 30 degrees. This one is the tangent of 45 degrees. This one is tangent of 30 degrees. And this is tangent of 45 degrees. Again, these go back to our special triangles. 1, 1, and square root of 2, when that angle right there is 45 degrees. So the tangent of that is 1 over 1 is 1. So that puts a 1 here and here. All right, the rest of them are for 30 degrees, so 30 degrees, whoops, something like this, 30 degrees here, 1, 2, and square root of 3, and the tangent of that is 1 over root 3, which I could put here. Okay, so this is 1 over root 3 plus 1 over 1 minus 1 over root 3. Okay, I've got some problems here. One thing I want to do is get rid of the, the radical, get rid of the fractions inside of fractions. So first thing I'm going to do is multiply by top and bottom by square root of 3. Okay, and then I distribute. That's going to give me 1 plus the square root of 3 over, over square root of 3 minus 1. Okay. So... What do I need to do? I still got square roots in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply by the conjugate here, square root of 3 plus 1. Now in the bottom, let's go down a little bit, go over here. The bottom I'm going to get a difference of two squares. I'm going to get square root of 3 squared minus 1 squared. In other words, 3 minus 1 is 2 for the denominator. What about for the numerator? Okay, I use FOIL here. Square root of 3, there's the F. O would be 1. Enter is square root of 3 times square root of 3, which is 3. And the, the I and the L is 1. L, square root of 3 times 1, square root of 3. So put the combining like terms. 1 plus 3 is 4. Square root of 3 plus square root of 3 is 2 square root of 3. So 4 plus 2 square root of 3. And I'm going to divide the do this into two parts, so that's 4 over 2 plus 2 square root of 3 over 2, and that simplifies to 2 plus the square root of 3, which should be our final answer. Now, remember, of course, you can, you can kind of check a lot of your answers here if you have a calculator. Uh, this kind of calculator will not solve for you, but it will check them. For example, if you do... Um, now I'm in I'm in radian mode, which is the way I'd prefer to do this. So if I do the tangent of 75, and I need a degree symbol, I get this. And if I put 2 plus the square root of 3, we get the same decimal approximation. So that's that's kind of good news there. We feel like we've got the right answer. Of course, if you just try to put in the decimal version not going to work because that's an approximation. Next question. Find the exact value here. Um, actually, okay, very similar kind of question. Okay, so this one is tangent of pi over 4 plus pi over 3. So we're going to use our our uh, uh, tangent of a sum 
identity, so that's tangent of pi over 4 plus tangent of pi over 3 over 1 minus product of these two tangents, tangent of pi over 4 times tangent of pi over 3. Okay, now let's uh, so I'll use that same identity again. And pi over 4, remember, is when you have 1, 1, and square root of 2. The tangent's going to be 1 there, so that one and that one are 1. Alright, so now we know we need tangent of pi over 3. Pi over 3, 1, 2, square root of 3. Power 3 is the 60 degrees, the bigger of the two angles in this special triangle. And so tangent is square root of 3 over 1, or just square root of 3. So this is 1 plus the square root of 3 over 1 minus the square root of 3. Again, we're going to rationalize the denominator by multiplying by the conjugate. 1 plus square root 3. So we're making use of that, that a plus b times a minus b is a squared minus b squared, that pattern, sum and difference pattern, which gives us a difference of two squares. All right, so in the bottom we get 1 minus uh, 3. So it's 1 square minus the square root of 3 squared. So that's negative 2 for the denominator. In the top we, use, uh, we can just use FOIL. First times first is 1. Uh, o, 1 times square root of 3 is square root of 3. Inner is 1 times square root of 3. And outer is square root of 3 times square root of 3, which is 3. So this is 4 plus 2 square root of 3. And then, of course, we can just rewrite that as 2 fractions. 4 over negative 2 plus 2 square root of 3 over negative 2. And these both reduce, so that's negative 2 minus square root of 3. And there we go. Again, we can check the answer by negative 2 minus root 3. That's the decimal approximation that we got from the exact answer. And if we did it this way, tangent of pi over 4 plus pi over 3, we should get the same decimal approximation. And we do, so that checks out very nicely. Okay, now we want to use a sum, a cosine of a sum here. So remember, cosine of a plus b is uh, cosine a, cosine b, minus sine a, sine b. Definitely you want to memorize, memorize that guy. Okay. Now pi over 12 is not one of our nice angles, but let's see if we can build this up out of other angles that we know. Um, you can think of this, you might want to think of it in in, um, in degrees, maybe. So if you did pi over 12, uh, negative, negative pi over 12, Okay, we could think of it as degrees by multiplying by 180 and dividing by pi, and we get negative 15 degrees. So how can we get negative 15? Mm, how about 30 minus 45? 30 minus 45 is negative 15. So let's put let's do that in radians here. So cosine of negative pi over 12 should be cosine of pi over 6, pi over 6, correct, minus pi over 4. Okay. Let's, uh, let's put one more step in there just to make sure we've done this correctly. If we go backwards now and, and do these get these with a the common denominator, common denominator would be 12, so multiply top and bottom by 2, so this is 2 pi over 12, and this is um, multiply top and bottom by 3, so this is minus 3 pi 
over 12, which is negative 1 pi over 12. So that does work out. And now we can use our, our identity up here, cosine of pi over 6 times cosine of negative pi over 4 minus sine of pi over 6 times sine of negative pi over 4. Now I could actually do these with these as fourth quadrant annuals, but I can also use my even odd identities. Cosine of a negative is the same as cosine of the its opposite, the positive there. So I can drop that negative because cosine's even. But sine, these are gonna these are gonna be opposite, so I can pull the negative out and make this plus. Sine power six sine power four. Or I might know the identity cosine of a minus b in general is cosine a, cosine b, plus sine a, sine b. And just use that directly. But either way, we get to this point here. Pi over 6 is here, like 30, same as 30 degrees. 1, 2, square root of 3. The cosine of that is square root of 3 over 2. The sine of that angle is 1 half. Then pi over 4 is uh, 1, 1, and square root of 2 here. So it is, um, actually it's, square, it's 1 over square root of 2, but we also know that's square root of 2 over 2. So I'm going to write it that way. And the sine is the same. So I'm going to do it that way. And now this is, you can multiply these together. 2 times 2 is 4. Square root of 3 times square root of 2 is square root of 3 times 2, that's square root of 6. It's also 4. 1 times square root of 2 is square root of 2. You could leave it like that. They're probably going to want you to go ahead and put it together like this. And maybe write it something along that line. And that's that's what they have. They have it in a slightly, they have square root of 2 first. Shouldn't make any difference. Hopefully it won't make any difference when you uh, put it in, hopefully in the, in the software. Again, we can check this by doing cosine of negative pi over 12 and we get a decimal approximation and if we do this parentheses around the numerator square root 6 plus square root 2 close parentheses divided by 4 if your calculator is available yes they do check out so you can check them out a little bit there Okay, how about the next one here? So we know sine of angle U is negative 3 fifths, and U is a quadrant 3 terminal side. So let's see if we can draw angle U in here. Of course, initial side here, uh, as always, in standard position. And it's in this quadrant. Sine's going to be negative in, in, in quadrant 3 or 4, but they told us it's quadrant 3. And so we can think of, remember this is y over r, so you can think of y is negative 3, r is 5, and we've got to figure out what x is here. Maybe 4, negative. We'll come back to that and see how we did that in just a second. But so from here we want to go to the uh, down 3 and out, uh, actually out 4. So you know what, I can draw this. It's about there, actually. So, here's our uh, our triangle here. And we know this side is 3, and this side is 5, and this is x. So we know x squared plus 3 squared equals 5 squared. So that's 25, this is 9. So x squared equals 25 minus 9 is 16, so x is plus or minus 4. And where we are here, x is negative in this quadrant. So now we know x, y, and r for angle u, and so we can find sine, cosine, and tangent of that. Now what about the? So this is angle u. So angle u, we can use that to find sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, what about... Uh, so this is in quadrant 3 for angle V also, and it's negative 5 over 13. 
so x, y, and r. Okay, and it's the sine again. Okay, so sine is y over r. Okay, so this time we're going down 5, but we're going out 13. So we're going out here. Wait a minute, no. Out here, way out this way. So this is down 5. This is out 13. And we need to find the, uh, the x here. Again, we use the Pythagorean theorem x squared plus 5 squared equals um, 13 squared. 13 times 13 is 169. So 5 squared is 25. So this is x squared minus 69 minus 25 is 144. The square root of that is 12. So x is plus or minus 12. In our case, x is third quadrant. So x is negative 12. And there's the x, y, and the r for angle V. So we can figure those out. Let's, let's pull those down here. So angle V, let's see, angle U, angle V. Angle V, we got X, Y, and R. X, Y, and R for this point on the terminal ray. Uh, negative 12, negative 5, 13. That was for angle V. Angle U is negative 3, 5, negative 4. Uh, angle, no, negative 4, negative 3, 5. Okay, so now we have that. Now what we want to do is find cosine of u plus v. Cosine u plus v is cosine u times cosine v minus sine of u times sine of v. Okay, so cosine of u is x over r, so it's negative 4 fifths. Cosine of v is x over r here, which is negative 12 thirteenths. We're going to multiply those two. Minus sine of u is y over r, so it's negative 3 fifths. And v uh, sine of that is going to be y over r, negative 5 over 13. In both cases, the denominator is 5 times 13, which is 65. So here we have 48 over 65. Two negatives make positive. Here we have a total of three negatives, so that's going to make negative 15. So this is going to be, you know, 48 minus 15 over 65. And that is 33 over 65. 33 is 3 times 11. 65 is 5 times 13. Not going to be any canceling going on here. So that's your final reduced answer. Next question. Okay, oops, back. The double angle for sine of 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. You should just memorize that. If you don't remember that, of course, you can. You can derive it pretty quickly if you have the, at least have the sine of a sum, right? If you remember that sine A plus B is sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B and let B equals A, then this becomes sine of A plus A is sine A sine A cosine A sine cosine, excuse me, and then cosine sine, but A all the way around. So both of these are just sine A, cosine A, and there's two of them, so it's two, and this is sine of 2A, and then switch A to X here to fit what it has here. In the... Uh, in the double angle identity, cosine of 2x equals cosine squared minus sine squared. Replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared. To get 1 minus sine squared of x and another minus sine squared of x becomes 1 minus 2 sine squared of x to get that. So that's a uh, power reducing identity. And then we can take, or well, sorry, that's a double angle identity. Now take this same one and solve for sine square by um, subtracting 1 and then dividing by negative 2 and we get 
that, which is a um, the power reducing identity. So next question. Now we know sine of theta is negative four fifths, so that makes it. Uh, Put it in standard position for angle theta. It's got to be quadrant one, um, uh, three or four, or y is negative, and this tells us in quadrant four. So we can think of this as, uh, of course, uh, y over r. So you can think of y as being negative four, and r being five, and we'll see x is negative three. So something like that for our triangle here, x, and this is 4, this is r is 5, and so we know that x squared plus 4 squared equals uh, 5 squared, 16, 25 there, 25 minus 16 is 9, x squared is 9, x equals plus or minus 3, but we're in the third quadrant, so x must be negative 3. So now we have x squared. Uh, x, y, and r for angle theta. Okay, now we're going to use our our uh, double angle identities. So sine of two theta is two sine theta cosine theta, and so we just plug in sine is of theta is for theta. It's y over r for theta, so that's negative four over five, and cosine would be x over r, so that's negative three over five. Okay, 5 times 5 is 25 for the denominator. We got two negatives, makes it a positive. Um, 2 times 3 is 6, times 4 is um, 24. So 24 over 25 is sine of 2 theta. Similarly, cosine of 2 theta is, uh, we got different ways of doing it. One is cosine squared theta minus sine square of theta. We do it that way. Cosine of theta is negative 3 over 5. Sine of theta is negative 4 over 5. We're going to square those. So this is 9 25ths. We still got the minus out front. Those two minuses cancel because of the squaring. So this is 16 over 25. So 9 minus 16 over 25 is negative 7 over 25. Okay. And tangent of 2 theta is, okay, well, there's a couple ways to get it. You can do it, well, actually, one easy way to do it, if you don't remember the identity for tangent 2 theta, just remember tangent 2 theta is, is sine 2 theta over cosine. 2 theta. This might be the easiest way to do it. So we know sine of 2 theta we just figured out is 24 25ths. Cosine of 2 theta was negative 7 25ths. So that's 24 25ths divided by negative 7 25ths. That's 24 25ths times 25 over negative 7. And you multiply the 25s cancel and you get negative 24 over 7 which doesn't reduce. Of course, we could have also used a, a double angle identity for tangent and would have gotten the same thing. Next. Um... The domain of the inverse sine is going to be the range of sine, which is negative 1 to 1. The domain range of the arc tangent or inverse tangent, uh, the, the domain's all reals. The range for the inverse tangent is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Now, you can see this a couple of ways. For example, uh, the tangent, you want to restrict it to one piece going here, which is one period from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, so this is y equals tangent of x, but not the whole y equals tangent, only the ones when x is going from, well, it really can't be these, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. 
and so whenever we do the inverse tangent, it's the inverse of that one, and so now it looks like this. So this is y equals arc tangent of x, or in your calculator, written this way. And then now we see the domain, and over here the range is our reals. So over here the domain is our reals, and the range equals uh, the negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. When we did the sine in the previous problem, we want to restrict sine to one piece that looks like this, going from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, and we restrict the domain to being minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, and the range, of course, is the same as the range of just a regular sine function, negative 1 to 1, and this is a sine with those restrictions. We do the inverse of that. That's y equals arc sine of x, or inverse sine of x. And it's going to be that reflected over the line y equals x. So it's going to curve this way and this way. And it's going to go between negative 1 and 1 on the x and from negative pi over 2, pi over 2 on the y. So we see the domain and range are switched. So the domain is uh, negative 1 to 1. And the range is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And so uh, that particular last question asked us about the domain. Could ask about the domain or the range of these inverse trig functions. Let's see what we got for the next one. So what about the inverse tangent or arc tangent of square root of 3? So inverse tangent of square root of 3, I would rather write it as the arc tangent of square root of 3. Okay, so we're wanting an angle in radians, okay, whose tangent is the square root of 3. So we're looking for, let's call this angle theta. We know the tangent of theta is square root of 3, but then the tangent also has to be, uh, let's see, that's sine up here, arc tangent between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So we want this here with the restriction that theta has to be between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay, so where is that? Well, we're looking at an angle that's somewhere between here and here on the unit circle. But we want, um, but it's positive here, so we're look, looking at an acute angle whose tangent is square root of 3 over 1. So, um, so that's y. So y is the square root of 3. x is 1. And we know that's 1, 2, square root of 3. That's exactly our special triangle there. 60 degrees or pi over 3. You can check that in the calculator. Notice that we are in radian mode. If we do inverse tangent of square root 3, we get a decimal number and we check and we see that that is pi over 3. Same thing. So even though there are infinitely many, infinitely many angles that have a tangent of pi over 3, that one only pulls out that specific one. Okay, next question is the sine of the inverse sine of 2 thirds. So if you do it in this order, these are going to cancel each other out. This says, give me an angle whose sine is 2 thirds, what is its sine? Well... It's two-thirds. So these cancel each other out. However, be careful if we did it the other way around. Inverse sine of the sine of something. Well, we could say two-thirds again. Okay. What would happen here? Okay. 
This says find the sine of two-thirds of a radian. And, well, let's say instead of two-thirds, let's say, let's just give it some, some kind of number that we know the answer to. Let's say 3 pi. Okay. Well, the sine of 3 pi is actually 0. But the inverse sine is not back to 3 pi. It's an angle whose sine is 0, but not just any angle, an angle between negative power 2 and power 2. And so that is 0. So these don't exactly cancel each other out when you go, when it's the inverse trig function on the outside. But when the in, regular trig function is on the outside and its inverse is on the inside, those are going to definitely just cancel each other out. So we know sine of, of arc sine of A is A. And, but, but the arc sine of the sine of A, let's call that theta, we know that sine of A equals the sine of theta, but we also know that theta has to be between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. And A may or may not be. If A is in between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, then A and theta are the same. But if A is outside of that interval, they're not the same. Okay, this brings up the problem that we talked about just, just now. So if we have y equals the inverse tangent of the tangent of 3 pi over 4. Now, if we had, in general, if we have the tangent of the inverse tangent of a, we get a, regardless. But if we have the inverse tangent of the tangent of a, is some angle theta. We know that the tangent of theta is the same as the tangent of angle A, but theta for, for arc tangent has to be, the output of arc tangent has to be between uh, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. You have to think about how we define these things. Some of them go between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, others between um, 0 and pi. So, Whatever angle, what, I, what y we're looking for, we know the tangent of y is the same as the tangent of 3 pi over 4. Okay, well the tangent of 3 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4 is over here, and it has a tangent of 1. So we know tangent of this, y is this, but we also know that y is between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. So we want the one that has a tangent of that, but we want it over here in this quadrant. And so in this case, it's right here at pi over 4. Or y equals the inverse tangent of tangent of 3 pi over 4 is inverse tangent of 1, which is pi over 4. You can sort of check this with your calculator. Um, Again, we're in radian mode, so I can do the inverse tangent of the tangent of 3 pi over 4, and we get this I'm sorry, I, this is, I messed up. It's, uh, it should be minus pi over 4, because this is negative 1. 3 pi over 4 is less than pi. That's over here. That's made a mistake. Sometimes it's good to check things on the calculator, isn't it? So uh, so we see that this is 3 pi over 4 is less than pi. It's over in that quadrant with the reference angle of pi over 4. So it's actually tangent's negative in that quadrant. So that's negative. And so which one is in this, this over here? Well, negative for quadrant 1 or 2, 1 or 4 is going to be 1 and 4 with a reference angle pi over 4. So that's negative pi over 4. Okay, and check it out. Negative pi over 4. Hopefully this is going to be the same number. Yes, it checks out. So negative pi over 4 is correct. Next. Next. 
sine of the inverse tangent of negative 3. Okay, so let's let theta be the inverse tangent of negative 3. Remember, the output of, a, of an inverse trig function is an angle. So we know that the tangent of angle theta is negative, negative 3. Okay, and we also know that theta is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay, so now let's look at this angle. Let's draw, uh, let's draw a right triangle here. This is not the scale necessarily, but where this is your angle theta. Well, we know the tangent is uh, negative 3. So you could think of um, negative 3 over 1. Not drawn in our normal orientation there. Well, let's draw it our normal way. Um, if you think of it as a grid, it's going to be in the fourth quadrant for theta. Okay, because theta has to be here, the positive in the first quadrant, negative here, has to be somewhere down here around between negative power 2 and power 2. And so um, x over, so this is 3, and this is 1, definitely not on the scale, and then this is r. So let's figure out r. 1 squared plus 3 squared equals r squared. That's 1 plus 9 is r squared. 10 equals r squared. r is the square root of 10. So this is square root of 10. So we have x equals negative, is positive 1, y equals negative 3, and r equals square root 10. Okay, now this is for angle theta, which is the inverse tangent of negative 3. So we want the sine of this angle. Well, we see that theta is in quadrant 2, so the sine is going to be a negative number, and the sine is just y over r, so this is negative uh, 3 over square root of 10. They're probably going to want this with a rationalized denominator, so we're going to multiply by square root of 10 over square root of 10 to get 10 in the bottom and negative 3 square root of 10 in the top. Personally, I'd, left, I'd rather it be like that, but they're going to want it this way on the calculator, on the program. So there we go. Okay. Um, sine of the inverse tangent of 10x. Okay, this is very similar. If theta equals the inverse tangent of 10x, we know the tangent of theta is uh, 10x, and we know that that theta is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So we're looking at a quad at, at something here in one of these quadrants. Now I don't, I don't really know. It depends on whether x is positive or negative, whether we're in the first or the second quadrant. But let me just draw it here in the first. Okay. And so this is, uh, we can think of it as 1 for x and 10, I mean, 10x for y and 1 for x in this drawing, where this is theta. And then there's r. So let's do r. r squared equals 10x squared plus 1 squared. So that's 100x squared plus 1 is r squared. So r is the square root of 100x squared plus 1. So that's r. x is uh, 10x. x here is, is what we're calling 10x, and y is 1. So we can do those substitutions. Sine, then, is going to be uh, y over r. So that's 1 over square root of uh, y. y is 10x x is 1. So y is 10x, r is 100x squared plus 1. And so that's the sine of that angle. And it works out nicely because the denominator is always positive there. So when x is positive, uh, when this x is positive, it, this is a first quadrant angle, and sine will be positive. That's good. And when it's down here, uh, if x is negative, it will be down here in the fourth quadrant, and sine will be negative. So the, the positive-negative part of it works out just great. <laughs> Close to the end here. 
Okay. Cosine of x equals negative one half. Find all the solutions. Uh, well, actually, not all the solutions. Yeah, all the solutions. And the ones that you put in the box need to be between 0 and 2 pi. So cosine is negative 1 half. Now cosine, okay, so we can go from 0, 0 to 2 pi is going around like this. Okay, and we want to go cosine is negative. So that's over here in the second quadrant. And so cosine is x over r, so we think of radius 2 out here. Um, let's pretend this is a circle here, part of a circle. Okay, and we could look at this, radius 2, let's say, not necessarily drawn to scale here, and this is x is 1, so that makes this side square root of 3, and so this reference angle, in both cases, that reference angle is uh, 30, no, 60 degrees, or pi over 3 in radians. Okay, well, what does that make these angles? Well, the one that goes this far is pi minus pi over 3. That's 3 pi over 3 minus 1 pi over 3. That's 2 pi over 3. And this is pi plus another pi over 3. We'll take us to there, which is 4 pi over 3. So one possibility is 2 pi over 3. That'll get you to here. And then if we shift that by any multiple of 2 pi, integers times 2 pi, then that'll give you all the angles that end up here. And then the other possibility is uh, to get here, well, one way to get there is 4 pi over 3, and then also add any integer multiple of 2 pi over 3. So those guys there were in as any integer are the, all the answers, and that's what they have here. Okay. Oops. Um, okay, here we go. So here we have cosine of x equals minus the square root of 2 over 2. Now we know where those are. Um, cosine is negative in the second and the uh, third quadrants. And so um, we're here and here where, uh, of course, this is minus 1 over square root of 2. It's another way to say that. And so you can think of this as 1, 1, 1, and square root 2. Okay, and so if we want to find all the formulas, so there certainly are solutions, and we want to pick angles from 0 to 2 pi, so we want to pick the angle going this way, well we know the reference angle here is pi over 4 in both, places, both cases. So this is uh, 1, 2, 3 pi over 4 here, and if we go around this way to here, that's going to be 4, 5 pi over 4. So our two solutions in within an interval are 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. But if we take 3 pi over 4 and add 2n pi to it, that will also give us a solution because it's just going to give you a coterminal angle. And we can get coterm of this one. And a coterminal angle of the 5 pi over 4, we get by adding 2n pi over 4. So it would be the set of all this. x is an element of that set such that n is an integer. And basically, they're having you write in, well, they're having you write in this part and this part. No, the whole thing. They're having you write that in. So you don't have to write in the, 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 the x element of, you don't have to write in the, the braces, you don't have to write such the n as um, you should, but they don't have you write that n as an element of z. They just have you write in this part right here, which you can see in the picture there. Oh, okay. Let's let's go back here and and uh, double check some things here. So, let's check this on the calculator real fast. Again, we're in radian mode. I could graph cosine of x plus one half and try to find out where this crosses the x-axis. And let me just do a zoom trig for starters. So if we want to go, x is between 0 and 2 pi here, my window almost goes up to 2 pi, so almost have two periods going here, you're going to be looking for these two guys right here, 
So you can calculate those zeros like this. Go over here. Left bound, get close, hit enter. Right bound, get on the other side. Hit enter. Get for a guess, get as close as you can to the axis. Hit enter. Quit. This is the x we just came up with. Notice it doesn't change to a nice fraction. But if I divide by pi and say change that to a fraction, we get 2 thirds. So it's 2 thirds pi, or 2 pi over 3. Well, that agrees with what we have here. We know the, the period of cosine x is, is a 2 pi, so that's, that's good. If we do the next one, um, we can similarly find the next one, calc 0. And let's do the same thing. This time we want to get a little closer to it. Pass that hump especially be nice. Okay, we're on the left side. Hit enter. Get on the right side. There we go. That's good. Hit enter. Get close to it. That looks good. Hit enter. And again, I'm going to do X. And notice if I divide by pi and change to a fraction, you get something nice. So it's 4 thirds times pi or 4 pi over 3. And of course, we know the period is is uh, 2 n pi. Our period is 2 pi, so shifts of 2 n pi will give you other solutions. Um, okay, next, next. Okay. Um, again, on our calculator, we could here look at cosine of x plus square root 2 over 2 and uh, again let's graph from let's graph from negative 2 pi to 2 pi going up by say pi over 4 maybe and uh, let's just leave that like it is for now okay there we go and so if you look here in the positive part, we see two solutions. We're going to get shifts of those over here. Looks like we got two periods going on here. And so we can calculate a zero. Left side, enter. Right bound, get on the right side, enter. Get too close to it, hit enter for a guess. And we quit. That's the X. we just came up with. It's not a nice fraction itself, but if we divide by pi, take our x, divide it by pi, and change that to a fraction, we get 3 fourths. So that's 3 pi over 4. In a similar way, we could get the other one to be 5 pi over 4. Okay, so we can get these to uh, work out. Okay, next... How about we start with the calculator solution this time? So here, again, be sure you're in radian mode. I can't say that enough. 4 times tangent of x plus 3, and I want this to be equal to 0. So I want to see where this crosses the x-axis. And 0 to 2 pi is what I have here for the positive part here. And it looks like we got a solution right here and then one over here. And it looks like Remember, the, the period of tangent of x is um, pi, and all we've done is we stretched it by 4 and shifted it, um, shifted it some here, shifted it up 3. So, still going to have the same period of pi. So, these are just shifts of each other. We can find this first one. We're going to find all of them. And this actually just asks us to do a, a decimal answer. So, this is probably as good a way to do it as anything is right here. Okay, here we go. See the cursor? Okay, so we're on the left side. Hit enter. Now go to the right side. Enter. And then our guess. That's good. Hit enter. And there's the 2.50 that we want as a... We're only needing the solutions between 0 and 2 pi, and we only need decimal answers. So this is, this is as good as you can... As good as any other way to do it. 
and then the next one, well, we should be able to take that x and shift it by pi. There's the x. And if we add pi to that, we should get the other one. But we could also have just calculated it just like we did the first one. Now the exact answer, let's lurk that out. 4 tangent of theta plus 3 equals 0. Let's find all the answers. So we subtract 3. And here we get tangent of theta and then divide by 4. So tangent of theta is negative 3 fourths. Well, that's not one of our special things for tangent. The ones we know that are special are things like square root of 3, 1 over square root of 3, plus or minus those things, um, plus or minus a half, plus or minus 1, 0. Those are the things we know. So one of the that first answer we can give is the arctangent of negative 3 fourths. Or um, that would be one answer. Uh, the one we're looking for actually is is shift of that pi plus the inverse tangent of negative three fourths because an inverse tangent of negative three fourths is going to be a negative number. We wanted a positive one, so this would give us one solution. Okay, but we, that's not the only solutions we can have any shift by the angle three four by any multiple of pi. So the exact answer could be written this way. Theta is an element of this set. Inverse tangent of negative 3 fourths plus n pi such that n is an integer. So, and for, for example, when you plug in n is 1 and you plug this in, this should give you the 2.5. So let's check that out. Make sure this is all checking out. So if you do pi plus the inverse tangent of negative 3 fourths, I believe this is going to give you, oops, got an extra parentheses in there. That's the same thing that I had for that first one. And then shift over by another pi, and you'll get the other one. So this is an exact, so the exact answer for this 2.5 one is pi plus the inverse tangent of negative 3 fourths. Or that could also be written as pi minus the inverse tangent of 3 fourths, because the inverse tangent function is an odd function, but approximately 2.5, or approximately even more decimals there. But that's this one. The 2.498091545 is still a, a, an approximation. Next. Okay, another equation to solve. Tangent of x plus 1 times 2 sine of x minus the square root of 3 equals 0. And ultimately, we only want the 1, 0, and 2 pi. I'll find all of them here first, and then we'll restrict it to that. So you get 0 on one side, you factor this. Those are already done for us. Then you set each factor equal to 0. Now solve these separately. That's an equals. Uh, subtract 1 here. Tangent of x equals negative 1. Or um, here we want to add square root of 3 and divide by 2. like that. So now, when will this happen? Okay, so let's think about the first one. If the tangent is going to be negative in these quadrants here, and tangent is going to be negative here and here. So one, one answer is minus pi over 4, and another, well, let's, let's, do, let's do the one this way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pi over 4, and this one is 3 pi over 4. So, uh, I could list them all by saying 3 pi over 4 plus n pi. And that's the ones that make tangent negative 1. Or, what about the sine here? Now, sine is positive. That's going to be in quadrant 
1 or 2, and it's square root of 3 over 2. It's going to look something like that, roughly. So, square root of 3 over 2, so those are 1, it's there. And so, remember that angle is pi over um, 3, 60 degrees, and that one's 2 pi over 3, pi over 3 short of 2 of pi. So, it could be uh, pi over 3 plus 2n pi, or it could be 2 pi over 3 oops, plus 2n pi. is an integer. Okay, so let me write this out a little bit where you can see it better. So what are your choices? Choices all together are 3 pi over 4 plus n pi, pi over 3 plus 2 n pi, and 2 pi over 3 plus 2 n pi, such that n is an integer. And then actually if you list, if you're now saying, that's all of them, but if you now say that x has to be between 0 and 2 pi, like that, there are actually four answers, 3 pi over 4, and then this one at 7 pi over 4, and then pi over 3, and 2 pi over 3, in some order. That's not the increasing order. Increasing order, I guess, if we did an increasing order, that would be pi over 3 first. That's the first quadrant one. Then next would be, there's 2 in the second quadrant, it would be 2 pi over 3 would be next. Then uh, 3 pi over 4, and then you had one all the way around in quadrant down here, which is 7 pi over 4, if you did it in increasing order. So there they are, and there they are. Okay, they did them in a different order, but should be the same. Hopefully they've, they'll count any order, and we have that. Once again, we could check that, or even calculate it with a calculator, by putting in here. You want to solve for zero first, which is already done. Tangent of x uh, plus 1, parentheses 2, sine of x minus root 3, like that and graph it. And mainly we're interested in from 0 to 2 pi here. So it looks like there's one, looks like there's maybe probably two here and a third a fourth one there. So let's just let's graph it just from since we only want from 0 to 2 pi, let's just graph it from 0 to 2 pi. And we're only really wanting to know when it crosses the x-axis. So let's let's kind of zoom in a bit just from negative 1 to 1 on the y's. Okay, so there's one right there. It's actually two right there, close together, and then one way over here. Okay, let's calculate those. Calculate the first one. Going back to the left here. Okay, there we are. Now we're on the left side of the first one. Get on the right side of the first one. Good. Get close to the first one. There we go. Guess. Enter. Quit. There's x. If we divide by pi and change to a fraction, we get one third. So that's pi over three. That's the that's the the closest one, as I said. Next one should be two pi over three. Let's check it out. Okay, so let's do calc 0 for the next one over here. Let's get close to it, get out of that piece altogether. Okay. All right, there we go. We're on there we are. We're on the right piece and we're negative, so we'll go there. Go over here until it becomes we will see where it changes positive. There's positive, so we hit enter. Go over here back to real close to where it's y is 0, that's close, enter, and we get a y, uh, an x there, here's the approximate value of that x, if we take that x, uh, divide by pi, and change to fraction, 
we get two thirds, so that's two power over three. And we can do the similar thing for the other two, and you'll see that they're going to work out. Okay, next question. Okay. Okay, four cosine square theta plus two sine theta minus two equals zero. Now we got a little problem here because we got sines and cosines. It'd be better if we only had one or the other. The easiest way, since the cosine is square, is to replace cosine square as one minus sine square of the theta, of course. Okay, I'm going to distribute 4 minus 4 sine squared theta plus 2 sine of theta minus 2 equals 0. Combine like terms, negative 4 sine squared theta plus 2 sine of theta uh, plus 2 equals 0. And I like my coefficients positive, and they all have a common factor of 2. So I'm actually going to divide both sides by negative 2 here. So that will give me 2 sine squared theta minus sine of theta minus 1 equals 0. It might be helpful if you do a substitution, u equals sine of theta. That might make it easier to see that what we're looking at here is just simply a simple quadratic. And we want to factor it to u and u. This is anti-foil factoring. Get zero on one side first. Okay, so then let's see one, one, uh, negative, positive. I think that works. Check out the foil. Two u squared minus one. Yes, that works out. Minus two u plus two. Okay, so that means each one of these factors, one of the two has to be equal to zero. So this says u equals one or this one says 2u equals negative 1, so this says u is negative 1 half. Now u is sine of theta. So what we have is sine of theta equals negative 1 half, or sine of theta equals 1. Now, first of all, in the unit circle, sine of theta equals 1 only when it's pointing straight up here. So this only happens when theta is... Um, power 2 plus multiples of 2 pi. But negative, it happens to be negative uh, two places uh, in these quadrants down here. And let's see, if it's 1 over 2, that makes this square root of 3, that makes that uh, 30 degrees. So that's negative pi over 6 and minus 5 pi over 6. So theta is either, well, let me just put it all together. So theta is either minus pi over 6 plus 2n pi, or minus 5 pi over 6 plus 2n pi, or it is pi over 2 plus 2n pi. So that's the n as an integer. Now that's all the solutions. Now, it wants you to list just the ones in 0 to 2 pi. Okay, well, uh, only when n is 0 here, pi over 2, does that one work? And um, to 0 to 2 pi would be here. Pi plus pi over 6 is 7 pi over 6. And, let's see, it'd be 12 minus 1 is 11. So 11 pi over 6 for that one.